In this video, we'll create a full screen animated landing page. Okay guys, so let's go ahead and check out our full screen animated landing page before we get started with the tutorial. So as you can see, I have the desktop version back here and then I have the mobile version off to the right and when we refresh the page you're gonna see that the discover heading as well as the sign up button are gonna bounce in with its animation so later in the video I'm gonna show you how you can add your own animation here you don't have to use the same animation that I'm using um, and then let's take a look at the mobile version here so we have some paragraph text underneath the landing page just so when we scroll up and down we get that full page feel and as you can see the uh, heading and the button are a little bit smaller on the mobile version because it's responsive so no matter how wide or narrow we have the website displaying the background image is always going to take up 100% of the screen. In the description of this video will be the starter files for this tutorial and if you need to do so go ahead and pause the video for a moment so you can download the starter files and then open up index.html and style.css in your text editor. I'm going to be using the free program called Sublime Text which you can get from sublimetext.com and then I'll have index.html open in Google Chrome as my web browser while we're building the landing page. So I'm going to put this aside and then let's open up index.html and go over what's included for us already in the starter files. So from the top of our HTML file here and inside of our head section, what we have up top is our website title. So discover animated full screen landing page. Then underneath that we have a link to our style sheet, which is right here, style.css. And then underneath that we have a link to the latest version of jQuery which we'll need for our animation. Then we have two CSS files here for animate.css, which adds our animation, and then waypoints.css, which will delay our animation. So you can put style.css into that folder as well if you wish. And then underneath that we have our JS files. So we have jQuery uh, waypoints.min.js for waypoints and then waypoints.js and then inside of our image folder we have the one and only image that we need for the tutorial which is forest.png so as you can see we have some paragraph text already started for us here so you don't have to go and get uh, dummy text and that's going to display once we open up index.html in google chrome so let's go ahead and get started now with our first tag. Let's start off with a section tag and we're going to call this section class intro and then drop down and close out your section tag and then we'll create a div class and call it inner. Okay and then close out your div tag. So section class intro is going to span the entire full screen landing page here and then section class inner will be for our content so let's create one additional div class here and we're going to call that content so div class content now let's create another section tag here and this is going to wrap our heading to create the animation so we're going to call this section class os dash animation and then data-os-animation and we'll add the type of animation we want from animate.css so I'm using the bounce in up animation just make sure that you capitalize the I in in and U in up and then the last thing that we'll do is reference our waypoints.js with data os animation delay and then we're going to have it at zero seconds for our heading. 
All right, so then drop down and close out your section tag. And I'm going to add H1 and then Discover for the Discover heading. So now if we refresh uh, the starter files version here, we'll have our Discover heading bouncing up top. So if you want to add your own animation, all you need to do is go to animate.css with a simple Google search, and you can add any one of these animations you want. I happen to like the ones that move up into the screen when we land on it. So I'm going to go ahead and just copy this section here, and we'll paste it underneath it. And then let's change the delay to 0.1 seconds. So now if we refresh, we have the second heading coming up right after the first, just like our button does in the finished version. So now let's change the heading here to the button. So we're going to have an A tag here. And you can link this to a page if you want. I'm just going to do the hashtag to keep us on the same page now. And we're going to call this A class BTN for button. Okay, so there we have our sign up text for the button, and we'll create the rest in our style.css sheet. So let's go ahead and get started with this. So first, let's reference our HTML document itself and the body section of the website with sort of a reset style so we can get rid of any inherent margin or padding that the web browser Google Chrome wants to add to our document here. So let's say margin zero padding 0, and then we'll give it a height and width of 100%. Okay. All right, so now we've done away with some margin or padding off to the left there. And the next thing that we'll style will be our intro class. So we'll use a period because it's a class rather than an ID. And then let's also give this a height and width of 100%. And then we'll say margin auto. And then let's add our background image. So background URL in parentheses img forward slash forest for the image from our starter files. And then we'll say no hyphen repeat 50%, 50% to keep it centered. So now if we refresh, there we have the start of our background image for our landing page. But as you can see, it's not showing the whole image, and we have some space up top we don't want. So let's say background size cover. And now we have the whole image displaying. And then to get rid of the space up top, let's say display table. And then top 0. Okay, so now if we refresh, there we have our full screen landing. Now we can move on to uh, the inner class here. Okay, so we'll reference that with dot intro dot inner. And then let's say display table cell. Since we're inside of a table with the intro class and then vertical align middle. So now if we refresh, we'll have our content aligned in the middle of the page here. But we want it center. So let's say text align center. OK, so now if we check our version over here, we have the discover and sign up text centered on the page. And then let's move it up some. So let's give it a padding bottom of 25% because the original has the heading and the button displaying much higher than this. OK, so refresh. And there we have it aligned with the original. All right, so now moving on down our HTML document, the next section is our div class content. So this is optional whether or not you want to have uh, any CSS for div class content. But if you're adding additional text or a heading underneath the main discover text, I would give it a max width. So let me just show you what I mean here. 
So let's say we add a paragraph here. And I'm just going to paste uh, some of this text from the paragraph below. All right, so now if we refresh it, we have the paragraph text there staying at a width of 500 pixels inside of the content class. And then we can do margin auto to center it. All right, so since we don't have any text underneath the heading, let's go ahead and style the heading one itself rather than the content class. Okay, so let's add the Google font from the top of our CSS document, which is the Open Sans font here. So Open Sans, and then our fallback font is Sans Serif. And then let's give it its color. So we're going to use a slightly off-white shade here, which is the hex value F9, F3, F4. So now if we refresh, there we have the change to our Discover text, looking kind of like the original, but let's change the font size to make it larger. So we'll give it a font size of 550%. And the last thing that we'll do to our heading one is add the text shadow. OK, so let's add a text shadow of 3 pixels horizontal, 3 pixels vertical, and then the hex value of 098FA8. OK, so now if we refresh, there we have our text shadow, um, and the color matches the forest image. So now let's move on down to our button with the BTN class. And let's change the font size to 150%. And let's use the second font family referenced in our Google font, which is Poppins. And then our fallback font, of course, is Sans Serif. OK, so there we have our sign up text. And then let's take away the underline with text decoration none. Then let's add the color to our text. So we're going to use the same hex value that we did in the text shadow for our heading 1, 098FA8. OK, and then when we refresh, here we have the turquoise sign up text. And let's add the border next. So border 2 pixels solid, and then hex value 098FA8. All right, so here we have the border, but we'll need to add some padding to get it looking like the original. So we'll have padding all around. Let's have padding of 10 pixels top bottom and 20 pixels left right. And then lastly, let's add our border radius. So let's give it a border radius of 5 pixels to make the corners rounded here. Okay. So lastly, let's drop down and add a hover color to our button. So we'll reference the BTN class and then colon hover. And let's change the color to a darker shade, which is a hex value 156377. And then we'll also change the border to the same hex value, 156377. OK, so now when we refresh, there we have the hover effect when we hover over the button. All right, so lastly, for the desktop version of our landing page, let's just add a little bit of style to our paragraph text. So let's give it a font family of sans serif, and then font size 120%. And we'll space it out with line height 190%. And then text align justify to give it the straight up and down newspaper feel on the right side. And then margin 3% all around 
to create some space. Okay, so there we have it looking just like the original here. So now let's move on to a couple of quick media queries for the mobile version of the website. So as you can see with the original we have the resized heading button as well as the paragraph text underneath. So let's go ahead and add our media query. So we'll write at media and then in parentheses max width 768 pixels and then open and close your swirly brackets and we'll reference our heading one first and let's change the font size to 300 percent from 550 percent okay so that's looking pretty good now let's change the button so dot btn and let's change our font size to 110 percent from 150 and our padding to 7 pixels top bottom and 15 pixels left right from 10 and 20 okay and then lastly let's just make our paragraph text a little smaller so font size 100 percent and then line height 160 okay so let's take a look at the final version here so we have everything resized and it's looking pretty good on the mobile version as well as the desktop version. So that does it. I want to thank you for sticking around with me through the tutorial. Please remember to like the video, subscribe, and turn on your notifications. Then I'll see you in the next tutorial. Thanks for watching.